ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for inviting me here to join you at the, uh, the Media Summit. Um, my name is Patrick Walker, and I work for Facebook. I'm based in London. I come out to London from London for this event. But like many of you, I've lived in many parts of the world. Um, my mother is Palestinian. My father is from Kansas in, in America. And uh, like many of you also, I've been using Facebook for about 10 years to stay in touch with my friends and family. Two years ago, I was asked to join Facebook to head up the media partnerships team. And uh, it's been quite a remarkable two years. Quite a remarkable two years in, in many ways. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we work with partners, some of the things that we've learned, and how perhaps you can get more involved working with us. But first, let me ask you, uh, first of all, if you want to put on the headsets, because I'm showing a number of videos, and you will be able to hear the videos better if you're wearing the headsets. Um, so how many of you are using Facebook today? Put your hands up, please. How many of you were using Facebook five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago? There's always somebody. Actually, Facebook is only 13 years old, so um, it feels like a much longer time. In fact, we've grown so much, but we have to remember that we started from really a, a place to connect college students with one another, and things have changed so dramatically. And, and to help illustrate how much things have changed. Let me take you back even farther. This is me 20 years ago. I was a journalist with the BBC News based in Southeast Asia, and I was covering the downfall of Suharto, the riots on the streets of Jakarta. And at that time, I had a mobile phone that was literally just a mobile phone. I could make a phone call, and that was it. And to shoot pictures, and to transmit pictures, I had cases of equipment, I had a three-person team, and I had to wind my way through the dangerous streets to find a satellite uplink to send video back to London for the 10 o'clock news. Think about how things have changed in this short amount of time. Even without Facebook, your world in media, your world as a, as a, as a consumer, your world as a producer has changed because of this device in your hands. The power of this device, mobility, connectivity, quality of image. And what does this mean? It means massive transformation for all of these industries. All of these industries have had to think carefully about their own digital transformation and what it means for them. It also means that the way in which we tell stories has changed. Just think about the Facebook news feed, which is only 10 years old. It used to be just text, and then it was photos, videos as well, and now you can even upload from anywhere in the world 360 virtual reality images straight from your phone to an audience of perhaps up to 2 billion people. That's remarkable. But it also creates a number of challenges. When anyone, anywhere in the world, can upload anything instantaneously in high quality, this is something that's a very big responsibility for us, that we take very seriously. And also, we've learned, in many cases, the hard way, that just connecting people with great connectivity and great products isn't necessarily doing good. We learned the hard way that we can do better on news integrity. We can do better to fight misinformation. We can do better with people that were manipulating our ads around elections. And even more recently, we've learned that we could have done better with people's data. Nobody has done this before. Two billion people connected instantaneously. It's, it's new for everyone, but it's no excuse for us. We need to improve our, stat, our, our policies and what we do as the technology becomes more powerful. This is one of the reasons why we changed our mission from connecting people to helping people build community and bringing the world closer together. Because unless you put a positive intent into your mission, into the technology, you may create too much opportunity for people to use the technology for negative means. And we have to work together, civic society, media organizations, and ourselves to, to battle against these, these forces, to mitigate the bad while elevating the positive aspects of an open internet. So I want to talk a little bit about the newsfeed. The newsfeed is how most people get uh, their information when they come to Facebook, um, and it's transformed a lot. One thing that we've been quite consistent about is our newsfeed values. And I won't read through all of these, but I want you to, just to look at some of the reasons and the things that go behind our development of the algorithm to help you have a meaningful experience when you come to Facebook. If we didn't have values and we didn't have an algorithm, you would have, on average, maybe 3,000 stories in chronological order that may not be a good way for you to spend your time. 
right? So we have to find a way to meaningfully provide you, based on signals you give us, information that puts friend and family first, that's informative, that entertains you, that's authentic, that's not trying to fool you. And also, we need to constantly change this algorithm to stay ahead of the curve. One of the things that we announced this year, at the beginning of the year, because so much content was coming onto the Facebook platform, we understood that we wanted Facebook to remain a place for friends and family to connect. There are many places just to sit back and watch. And Facebook was becoming a place of more passive consumption. Now that's not bad, but we wanted to take advantage of what really people connected to Facebook for, friends and family first. And so we altered our algorithm to focus really on people connecting through social engagement, which is a very unique aspect of Facebook. I'm going to show you a video that outlines a little bit about how this affects the feed and how that might affect your thinking about putting content on Facebook. So if you could put your headphones on so you can listen to the video, that would be great. People come to Facebook to turn up the volume, people please. who matter to them. And over the next year, our team's mission is to help you have deeper, more meaningful interactions with people you care about. We use a process called ranking up a little bit. to determine which posts show up in your newsfeed and in what order, based on what we think you'll be most interested in. A like, comment, or share is one sign that a post matters to you, so posts you are likely to interact with generally get higher ranking scores. Now, we'll also consider whether a potential interaction is between two people or between a person and a page, which are the accounts run by businesses, organizations, and public figures. Person to person will be more valuable than person to page. Connections with people in your network will get the biggest boost because interacting with people you're close to is more meaningful. We're also going to prioritize exchanges that reflect more time and care. Interacting with people, like having a conversation or reminiscing about things you've shared, is associated with a greater sense of well-being. And the benefits are even stronger when you're close to the person and when the interaction requires some effort. For example, typing out a long and thoughtful reply to a friend's post. On the other hand, just scrolling through your Facebook feed, passively reading or watching without interacting with others tends to make people feel worse. Over time, we believe people will see more posts from people they're connected to and less content from publishers. We also expect overall time spent on Facebook to go down, but our goal is that the time people do spend on Facebook will be better. Facebook was built to connect you to the stories and people that matter most, so we're going to keep listening to you and working hard to make sure that's what you see every day. So the focus really is net, not just on time spent. Time spent, we can monetize that. That's good for business, but it's not good for the long term or for people's well-being if we only focus on time spent. We want to focus on time well spent and connecting people in a meaningful way with one another. So what does this mean if you're a partner? What does this mean if you're creating content? There are a couple things that you should think about. Promoting meaningful interactions. So when you're posting content, thinking about connecting with communities, thinking about seeking dialogue, posting places within other parts of Facebook as well, within groups, for example, to create a place where people can start to share, encourage them to share, is very, very important to be given greater visibility within the newsfeed. Focus on your audience. Instead of posting lots and lots and lots and lots of stories every day hoping for the best, look at the analytics, look at the data, see what people are responding to and focus on that. We have a lot of great tools that you can use and analytics to help you identify what's working, what's not. And don't use engagement bait. This is something that we see a lot. We saw it with clickbait in advertising. We will be on the lookout for engagement bait where we say click here to win a prize or click here to do something. That will actually be punished within the newsfeed. So thinking authentically about engagement is the key. Groups actually are one of the areas that I'm most excited about. We have over a billion people that are engaging with groups every month on Facebook. And this is like the new community gathering space, whether you're talking about your favorite sports club or you're talking about how to cook a dish or maybe it's a local group for mothers who like to run. Groups is an area where partners are actually learning to engage more. The Times in the UK is a great example where the debate around Brexit was very, very um, intense on the Times. And so they created 5248, which is the vote, uh, a private, a group where only a few thousand people could come and in a meaningful, positive way contribute to one another's discussion and learning about the issues from all sides. 
Two-thirds of members engage in the group every week. This is very, very high, meaningful social interaction. Something you should think about if you're a news organization. The other thing we're investing in heavily is the continuation of the Facebook Journalism Project, which we started uh, one year ago. And we just had our one-year anniversary. So collaborative development of products, monetization through subscription and through advertising, news credibility, so you see your logo of the news organizations, so you can identify the news source. We don't want people to come to Facebook and not understand the source of the news. News credibility is very important. And also the story formats, live, breaking news, also uh, other ways that you can use stories, for example, on Instagram and Facebook to tell a different sort of story. Training and tools, training courses. We actually have a booth over there where you can learn about our products. Journalists can understand how to engage. Crowd tangle for understanding analytics. And of course, continuing investment in false news education, working with governments around the world in upcoming elections in Brazil, uh, for example, and around this region to make sure that we're going ahead of the curve to fight against negative use of the platform. And of course, 2018 is very much about high quality news. Focusing on sources that are credible and working within each organization, each community, and each region to make sure that this makes sense for all of you. The other thing I want to talk about very briefly is Facebook Watch. So we're investing heavily in video. I talked about the news feed became a very passive place of consumption. We want to create a new space on Facebook called Watch, where people can communicate with each other around video that's of a longer form. You might be surprised to know that one third of all video consumed on Facebook today is over 10 minutes in length. That's quite surprising. So we're investing heavily in social video made for Facebook. And here's a little video that talks a little bit about that. Even before Facebook Watch comes to this region, it's important to think about a few things when you think about video for Facebook. Activates communities. Think about videos that tap into existing communities, passion areas, cooking, food, beauty, social groups, sports. Longer than newsfeed, video that sits within Watch can be of any length. We don't know what the upper limit is. We're having people watching videos of 20 and 30 minutes in length even. Regular publishing, so regular, constant uploading. So you create a relationship with your user base. If you publish a video on the Facebook newsfeed today, you're not sure if somebody's going to see it the next time or the next time. Here we want to create a direct subscription relationship for people to follow your videos, and every time you post, they're notified. So you build a direct relationship, and you need to publish regularly. And the content is made really for a social environment, made for Facebook. If it's not on Facebook, it will not be as good because it doesn't integrate live, comments, sharing, all these things that make the social experience so good. And I'd like to end to, to highlight somebody that I've spent some time with since I've come here, it's my second trip, named uh, Khalid Al -Ameri, Ameri. Are you familiar with him? Any of you? A number of you. He is, he's, he's quite amazing. He's the number one Emirati uh, creator on Facebook. He quit his job to focus fully on his Facebook craft, making videos. And what we really like about him is he really thinks about content that connects people. He really thinks about content that entertains and informs people. He sparks a conversation. He creates meaningful interactions by encouraging people to, to comment and think and debate and discuss sometimes very difficult topics. He's collaborating with others. His wife also has a channel showcasing her skills. And he also posts consistently and uses data and analytics. He's not afraid to experiment. And lastly, he's monetizing. Even before we've launched ads in this region, he's monetizing through branded content relationships. So it's possible before we launch any of these tools for you to build a business and monetize content through these sorts of tools. I'm going to end with a nice video that he created just recently, um, just to leave you with the type of thing that we're very excited about supporting and investing more in the creators and in our partners and in our relationship and in our team so we can have a better relationship going forward. So let me end with this video.
I shouldn't be on Facebook. Why? The, why what? Why shouldn't you be on Facebook? And then let me do the video. You can watch the video. I shouldn't be on Facebook. Why? Because Khalas. <laughs> I shouldn't be on Facebook. That's what everyone told me when I first started making videos. They said I needed to be on other platforms like YouTube, that I needed to be making videos in Arabic. But that's not who I wanted to be. That's not what I wanted to become. My goal since the very beginning was to reach a worldwide audience, to teach people from around the world about the Arab world. I always wanted to be that bridge between the Arab world and the rest of the world. To be a door that everyone could walk through every day to learn more about this part of the world. Many said it wouldn't get engagement. Many said that no one would watch. But what I've learned through this journey is number one, to start, I cared. That a platform like Facebook can connect us every day, can bring people from all over the world together every day. What I've learned is to always stay true to yourself. You know, deep down in your heart, what it is that you want to do. Don't let anyone change that, because it's that thing that makes you unique, it's the same thing that makes you stand out and make you different from everyone else in the world. Hold on to that, protect it, and follow that voice in your heart every single day. Much love to you all, and God bless always. Assalamu alaikum. Now do you know why Facebook? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank Aled, his wife Samara. I want to thank all of you and all of our partners, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much.